everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. Some serious pride on the line in this contest as these two divisional rivals take the field together for the first time this season. Almost a playoff atmosphere surrounding the game between these two bitter opponents. It's the Broncos going up against the Raiders. With that, let's get you out to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this Week 9 matchup. Larry, apart from a 13-year gap in L.A., we are at the home of the Raiders since 1966. But how much longer will they be playing football in Oakland, California? Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Oakland Raiders. Hi again, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, we look at the Raiders here entering play. They're halfway home, looking good at a perfect 8-0. And not much to complain about so far, is there? I'd have to say they're the best team in the NFL through the first half of the year. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they come off a disappointment last time out that put an end to their modest three-game win streak. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. So here are the defending Super Bowl champion Broncos on offense now. They're led out by their quarterback out of Northwestern University. It's Trevor Simeon. This young man is near and dear to my heart. I saw him play in high school. Olympia High School in Orlando, Florida, where he was a prolific passer, real smooth in delivering the football. Had to sit a while at Northwestern before he got his chance to be a full-time starter. Showed his potential. Drafted late in the process by Denver. And now he's got a chance to be a starter in the NFL. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. Jamal Charles, nobody in front. 30. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Illegal block in the back. Offense. And of course, the defense is going to accept this penalty. Hang on now. Three, 19. On the run, it's Charles. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. So we'll look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. Short yardage situation, here's Charles. And he's gonna lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Brandon, from the defense's perspective, that's a tone setter. They try to hit him with a draw early, and they snuff it right out. He gets this away, it's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here comes the Raider offense now onto the field. Leading them out is a guy who's been a Raider starter since day one in his third season now. It's Derek Carr. And the Raiders believed in him enough to select him, so we knew that they liked him. But after they watched him play as a rookie, they realized they had their quarterback, and they wanted to build around him. Remember last year, they drafted Amari Cooper to get him a number one receiver, and they fortified the offensive line to make sure they could. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. 
they should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out with a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Charles the low set back. And he lost the football. Try the big man. Get the oxygen tank ready. And he's in. Touchdown, Raiders. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. And they will line up now for the two-point try. They'll try and throw for it. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. Now they had the big play on the fumble return. They were looking for the one-two punch, but they couldn't get that two-point conversion. And I have to wonder, were they scheduled to go ahead and kick the extra point? But after a play like that, you talk about the one-two punch, right? It's a momentum play. Go for two and really try to capitalize, and that's what they attempted. And now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. After the interception, here's Simeon. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. He's come a long way since his time at Georgia Tech. What did he run at Tech? He ran hitches and, and go routes, essentially. Yeah. I mean, but he ran them really well. He averaged well over 20 yards a catch while he was there. And he still creates downfield in the NFL. That big body and that willingness to go catch the football. He's pretty impressive. And his friends call him Bebe, the nickname his uncle gave him back in the day. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On second down, Jamal Charles. And eventually brought down, but it's near the five at the six. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. He was trying to get it off to Jamal Charles there. That'll bring up second down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. Second is Simeon. That's caught at the two. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Virgil Green, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Broncos are an extra point away from taking the lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone. Short field. 
but now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And in the end, the decision to bring it out costs him a few yards as he's out of bounds just past the 20. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. And now this offensive unit, we get a look at their starters. They put up good numbers last week looking to carry that forward. Yeah, Brandon, they saw the numbers from last week. They expect to at least replicate them. They think that they can put up bigger numbers this week. They are a confident bunch. Second down here after the incomplete pass. From the gun, it's Carr. Forced out to his left. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice game. He's going to rifle one, and that's caught inside the 35. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. The last drive, he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know there's a quarterback in this league that's any good. That Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Second down following the run. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Throwing his car on third down. And this is caught. It's Cooper. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Raider touchdown. Amari Cooper, his third touchdown now on the year. And once again, the Raiders are back out in front. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Oh, it's, this is it. Taking it right down Broadway. A great read and it's picked off. And he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as head play backfires in a big way. Well, that was almost a four-point swing. The interception, if he had returned it all the way, would have been two for them, but just a little bit shy. And when it's a play like that, you're exactly right with the math, but don't you feel like it would have counted for more if they found their way all the way back to the end zone and gotten the two? That changes the whole momentum, doesn't it? Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they got something going and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense or are you just focused on this drive? 
it, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't score board watch. Everyone does it to some extent, but you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. A good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. Here's Simeon. He's got time in the pocket. Looking deep for Demarius. And incomplete. A disappointing drop there defensively by the rookie. And now fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. It's taken to the 26. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. And that last drive, a long drive. But not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look close. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Throw left side of the tight end, Walford. A big play there for the Raiders. 31 yards. And now a first down following that long game. Every quarterback likes having a reliable target at tight end, and I think young quarterbacks especially, because they want to get the ball in their hands quickly. I think these two, Derek Carr and Clive Walford, that's a pretty good connection for years to come for Oakland. Yeah, he started to come on strong end of his rookie year. Now the Raiders really hoping for that second-year jump out of Walford. All right, here we go. Red, 18. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. He lost two there, and it's third down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. It's picked up by the Broncos. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown and give some kudos to the defensive coordinator I think here they bring the blitz they dial it up and it turns into six points for them. it's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense it is so nice you're such an offensive guy like that I love it he dialed things up and boy a big play resulted for his guys well you like the credit to the defense there right my friend yeah you do, do I ever Now McManus for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is taken at his four. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 20. And now Oakland ready to take the field. Now a play fake here on first down. He'll buy some time right and almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. Second down following the incompletion. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. They completed the screen, but one of the things you worry about is can the quarterback get rid of the ball before he's actually tackled? So your offensive linemen have to hold up the rushers a little bit because you want to make sure you keep your guy's jersey clean throughout the game. Amari Cooper, the intended target, and that brings up fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now. 
And how about this? A fake. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And a fake will work. He's going to have a first down. It's a big play that time on the fake punt. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Oakland after this. Back now. As I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando Hill. Looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Darian Stewart. And they have the football, and will take over at the 24-yard line. And now Stewart still down after the play. And you hope it's not a re-aggravation of that foot injury. We'll take a break and get a report from Oakland after this. On first and ten, Simeon. Green with a catch left side. A big play there on the catch and run. And the Broncos are going to have a new set of downs. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. Under pressure, they got him again. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. So the roughing the passer penalty, 15 yards, and Charles, the defender, needs to know to stop there. We've been talking about it for years. You essentially get one step after the quarterback throws his pass. Anything close to that or beyond that, you're going to get flags. Green's got it over the middle. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Virgil Green with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Broncos will extend their lead. And he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Yeah, can he put it aside? Let's find out. Here's the option going right. And now he'll tuck it and run. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes a lot. Of and for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now a handoff. This is Charles. And he'll get it down on the plate in the 37. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go play action here on first down. Surveying the field. He'll air it out deep. For, he rifles one that's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. 
And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now. And this is a spot late in the clock near midfield, though. Maybe take a couple chances to see if you get in field goal range. You do that if you have trust. And this should be a position now for the great ones. They relish this opportunity to try and put points on the board. It's a pickup of 14 there. And it's a first down for the Broncos. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. Going underneath for Charles. And he's brought down. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room as we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report. Here's Larry Ridley. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Raiders are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Broncos will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Raiders with the ball midway through one. Here the defense will come up with a pick, and it's Tlaib who makes the play for this defensive stop. Offense out now following the INT. Here we'll get a fumble on the run. Raiders would pick it up and score. Raiders take the early lead. Broncos on offense, first quarter winding down. Green's found on the quick pass and catch. After the short pass, he'll score. Broncos go up by one. Third down from inside the 30. Cooper's gonna make the catch in traffic. He caps off the seventh play drive with a score. Raiders up by a field goal. Raiders have it at the 30. The football is gonna be up for grabs here. Broncos recover the ball and return it for a touchdown. The Broncos go up by four. Now to late in the first half. Under pressure here, the pass is picked off. Stewart's the one who makes the pick to give a boost to his defense. After the INT, offense comes out now. Pass will be completed over the middle. And this goes 41 yards for the score. The lead now at 11. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Now McManus on to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. A look at the offense now here coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. What was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's right. the Eagles. That's right. Then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Gross. That's correct. Partner, I think the easy thing now would be to just abandon the run and start throwing the football at all costs. But I've been in so many games where it doesn't work running the ball, it doesn't work running the ball, and then something pops, and now you get something going. I'm not so sure to just abandon your game plan this early in the second half. Two plays in a row, the defense won, stacking up the running game. They've got to feel good about themselves, but something has to be in the back of their minds. Are we being set up for something big? They've got to be careful. Now Sam in. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now. 
As he's on to punt for Denver. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him, that leads to an incompletion as we just saw there. That's winning football. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. This is brought in at the 21. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the defensive unit for the Broncos. They trot back out there. And now Big Moe's wearing a shirt of their color. They're hoping to continue that momentum in their direction, but maybe another pick. Here's Big Moe. He's momentum, right? Momentum. <laughs> and right now, he's hugging them. A gain of six there on first. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Steps away to his left. Now he'll throw. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by the rookie, Justin Simmons. What a nightmarish game he's having now. Six interceptions that he has thrown. Absolutely unbelievable, oh, isn't it? Hard to believe we're watching this and have seen it. But it just talks about the game of football. It give it and it take it away. Yeah, the guys, though, that have thrown six interceptions in a game, the likes of Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, I think Joe Namath, he did it three times. And he's back here in the struggle department in this one like he was a week ago. And, partner, I think you can pin some of this on that O-line, the room to run, just not, not there. You mentioned last week that it felt like the offensive line was getting beaten to the punch by the guys across the ball. Well, it was pretty that. evident, I thought. I mean, they were off the ball fast, penetrating, getting into the offensive back backfield really spilling a lot of runs before they got started so I thought your observation was spot on then and you're you're, you're right there again this week same thing is happening not able to get started because they're not able to control the point of attack Simeon got a man he finds Sanders and he's brought down but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game, and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, look credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. They have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, they've gone backwards so far in this series. Third and 13. They'll come out in the pistol. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. To throw is Simeon. Looking for Sanders here on the deep ball. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Sean Smith. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Throwing now is Carr. Buying time to his left. Now he's going to let it go deep left side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. He finds Roberts complete. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. It's picked up by the Broncos. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. 
And Denver getting set to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in the East Bay. It's Bronco football, and they also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth. So the D-line's going to spread out. From the 50, it's Simeon. Throwing right side, that's complete to Marius Thomas. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 12 yards, and that'll make it third and one. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now Jamal Charles on third down. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. On first down, Simeon. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. 13 yards there on the pickup. And it'll be good for a Denver first down. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think a guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. So everyone thought they were doing something. And he'll and take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Demarius Thomas, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. Give him eight on the play, and that'll make it a second down. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Car going to throw, being chased out left. Now he'll throw deep left side. And this is caught. A big play there. Carter Cooper, 61 yards. Here's Carr to throw. This will be caught at about the five. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Second and goal from the two-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. Now he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. A great play there with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Raiders make some inroads here on that deficit. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. And the Broncos are going to get the football. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. 
Off of play action, Simeon. On the crossing route, he hits Demarius Thomas. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Here's Charles. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It'll go as a gain of 12. And it'll be first down, Denver. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think of run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. Simeon now on second down. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Virgil Green with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Broncos will extend their lead. Well, it would be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. A little block in the back. Return team. Automatic first down. So out come the Raiders. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Carr again here on second and ten. Dancing to his left. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. It's not like pressure to affect the accuracy and the timing of a guy trying to throw the football. And on that play, they ended up flushing him to his left, contacted him as he's trying to throw the football, and that led to the incompletion. Forced out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. It's a gain of five. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now Carr, got to have this one. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and it is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Broncos are close to finishing off this football game. And Denver getting set to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in the touchdown Looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Shift together here from the D-line. Following the penalty, here's Charles. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. 12 yards to go on third down. Charles, the lone setback. He's going to get the football. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. Now the Raiders are going to use another timeout here. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play.
And McManus able to put it through. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. One receiver to the left is Cooper. Car now on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. You're dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. Well, partner, I think the defensive fellas got the memo, and they decided to cover him on that play. Yeah, he's already up over 100 yards in this game. They tried a deep shot, couldn't get him. Yeah, when you've had that much success. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Broncos, the win will help them keep pace in the playoff race as they move to 6-3 and three on the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they have to go to New Orleans to take on the Saints. Meanwhile, for Oakland, it's their first stumble of the season as they'll dip to 8-1 and one on the year. And they're going to get an extra week to stew over this as they're not back in action until week 11. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Oakland.